Hello, fourth graders. This is Ms. K, and we are on lesson six of our unit five. We're going to talk about volcanoes, geysers, and hot springs today. So here's your vocab. A volcano is a noun, and that is a hill or a mountain that forms over a crack in Earth's crust, and then lava erupts from it. A crater is a noun, and that is a bowl-shaped opening at the top of a volcano or geyser. So shaped like a bowl. Uh, fine is an adjective, and in this case, it means very small. Subduction zone is the place where one tectonic plate is sliding beneath another. So that's the sliding one underneath. Descend is a verb, and that means to move downward. A hot spot is a noun, and that is a very hot region deep within the Earth's mantle where a huge magma chamber forms. A plume is a column of magma that rises from the mantle into a chamber beneath Earth's crust. And then a hot spring is a noun, a naturally flowing source of hot water. So our big question is, how do scientists determine where volcanoes might develop? And chapter four is called Earth's Fiery Volcanoes. Imagine seeing new land form right before your eyes. You can do that on the volcano, I'm sorry, you can do just that on the island of Hawaii in the Hawaiian island chain. There, the Kalau volcano has been erupting continuously since 1983. At times, red hot lava shoots out of the crater at the volcano's top. More often, lava oozes out of the cracks on the volcano's sides. As the lava flows downhill, it cools and hardens into volcanic rock. When lava flows all the way to the ocean, it cools to form rock along the shore. This adds new land to the island, making it a little bigger than it was before. Erupting volcanoes are dramatic natural events. They can be a creative force, adding new land, even whole islands to our planet. They also bring minerals from deep inside the earth to the surface. However, volcanoes can be dangerous and destructive. Large volcanic eruptions can flatten entire forests. They can fill the air with poisonous gases and hot choking ash. They can release rivers of lava that burn and bury everything in their path. Erupting volcanoes can also trigger earthquakes, tsunamis, and landslides. They can even change the weather all around the world. The year without a summer. In the spring of 1815, a volcano called Tambora erupted in Indonesia. It was the largest volcanic eruption in recorded history. Tambora's eruption blasted enormous amounts of ash high into the atmosphere. In the months that followed, winds distributed the ash around the globe. The fine ash particles in the air blocked some of the sunlight reaching Earth's surface. Less sunlight means less warmth. Because of Tambora, the weather was much colder than normal in 1816. There were hard frosts in New England all summer long. A foot of snow fell in eastern Canada in June. Weeks of cold rain killed most of the crops in Europe. Many people called 1816 the year without a summer. What is a volcano? A volcano is a hill or mountain that forms over a crack in Earth's crust, which, which lava erupts. The crack leads down to a chamber or huge space filled with magma, which comes from the mantle. Tremendous pressure and heat in the mantle force magma in the chamber upward through the crack. If the pressure is great enough, magma erupts on the surface as lava. So down here, deep in the Earth's crust, we've got the magma chamber. So this is where there's a lot of magma stored. And then the volcano is forming over that crack. So here's the crack in Earth's crust, and that is what allows the magma to come out of the volcano as lava. Some volcanic eruptions are relatively calm and quiet, whereas others are sudden and violent. Each time lava erupts, a new layer of rock forms, making the volcano bigger and bigger. Many volcanoes gradually become high, cone-shaped mountains. 
Mount Vesuvius in Italy and Mount Fuji in Japan are good examples of volcanoes with this distinctive shape. Vesuvius and Fuji have something in common. They are active volcanoes. An active volcano is one that has erupted in the past 10,000 years and is likely to erupt again. When an active volcano hasn't erupted in a long time, it's considered a dormant volcano. Extinct volcanoes are those that have not erupted for at least 10,000 years. If you wanted to see a lot of volcanoes, where would you look? Volcanoes form where there are cracks and weak spots in Earth's crust. You'll find those mostly along the boundaries of tectonic plates that are moving apart. Volcanoes are also common where two plates are slowly colliding and one plate is subducting under another. The Pacific Plate is one of Earth's largest tectonic plates. It lies beneath the Pacific Ocean. Along its boundaries, the Pacific Plate is subducting under several other plates. Geologists call the plates where this is happening subduction zones. Deep ocean trenches and many volcanoes have formed along subduction zones. This is because the edge of a subduct subducting plate melts as it descends into Earth's hot mantle. Magma moves up through the cracks in the crust and erupts to form volcanoes above the subduction zone. The largest active volcano is Mauna Loa, a volcano on the island of Hawaii. Mauna Loa's last big eruption was in 1984. The volcano's peak is 13,796 feet above the sea level, but its base sits on the seafloor. From top to bottom, this enormous volcano measures more than 33,000 feet. Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world at 29,029 feet above sea level. Even though Mauna Loa is taller, this is because 20,000 feet are hidden beneath the sea. All right, we've got Mount Fuji in Japan here, and this is the Parikuten volcano in Mexico. Most of the world's volcanoes form along the boundaries of tectonic plates. Volcanoes around the ring of fire are good examples of this. So you can see these kind of make a ring shape. So scientists call this the ring of fire because a lot of volcanoes erupt from where those plates are um, moving. More than 450 active volcanoes lie around the edges of the Pacific Plate. There are just the ones on land. Many more rise up from the seafloor and are hidden beneath the ocean's surface. Together, all these volcanoes form what is called the Ring of Fire around much of the Pacific Ocean. It is one of the most volcanically active regions on Earth. And here is another volcano in Indonesia. Hotspots. Not all volcanoes form along plate boundaries. Some occur in places that geologists call hotspots. A hotspot is a very deep region within the mantle. A huge magma chamber forms beneath Earth's crust at a hot spot. Magma periodically erupts from the chamber through cracks in the crust. Geologists have identified dozens of hot spots worldwide. Some are beneath continental crust, others are beneath oceanic crust. Hot spots underneath oceanic crust have formed many islands. The process begins when magma erupting from a hot spot forms a volcano on the seafloor. With repeated eruptions, the volcano grows taller and taller over time. Eventually, the top of the volcano may rise above the ocean surface and form an island. Over a very long period of time, ocean hotspots may form chains of islands. This is because the hotspots remain in the same place while the tectonic plates are slowly moving. The Hawaiian Islands, for example, were formed by a hotspot located beneath the middle of the Pacific Plate. The island of Kauai formed about 5 million years ago. It began as an undersea volcano that grew tall enough to rise above the water. <clears throat> as the Pacific Plate inched its way northwest, Kauai moved along with it. At some point, the island was no longer above the hotspot. A new underwater volcano began forming on the seafloor. <clears throat> this volcano grew to form the island of Oahu. Oahu? Not sure how to say that. Sorry, guys. Next came the island of Malokai, then Maui, 
And finally, the island of Hawaii. Hawaii currently lies over the hotspot, which is why it has so many active volcanoes. Eventually, Hawaii will drift away from the hotspot and a new island will begin to form. All right, so this is saying several miles, there is an underwater volcano, and scientists estimate its top will reach the sea surface in tens of thousands of years. All right, geysers. Have you ever been to Yellowstone National Park? If so, you've stood over North America's largest hot spot. A great plume of magma rises from the mantle at this spot. It fills an enormous magma chamber beneath Earth's crust, in short, Yellowstone sits on top of one of the world's largest volcanoes. Geologists call it a supervolcano. Heat from the magma beneath Yellowstone is what creates the park's hot springs and geysers. Geysers are hot springs that periodically erupt, like volcanoes of hot water. Geysers form when water drains down into openings in the ground above the magma chamber. Heat from the magma turns the water scalding hot, as the hot water rises back up through the opening, some of it turns to steam. This increases the pressure, forcing the mixture of steam and hot water to rush and bubble upward. When it reaches the surface, a hissing fountain of hot water and steam explodes out of the ground. Yellowstone's most famous geyser is called Old Faithful. It got its name because it erupts reliably more than a dozen times a day. Magma itself hasn't erupted from the Yellowstone hotspot for hundreds of years. Could the Yellowstone supervolcano erupt again? It's possible, geologists say, but most doubt it will happen anytime soon. So this is showing the heat underground, the magma, and that magma is heating the water, and then the water in the steam is what comes out of the geysers. All right, number one, volcanoes can change Earth's surface, true or false. Number two, you're going to find evidence to support your answer. Number three, which is an example of how the eruption of a volcano can affect the weather. Number four, blink and heat from below the Earth's crust cause volcanoes to erupt. Blink from under Earth's surface erupts as lava above Earth's surface. Blank volcanoes have erupted in the past 10,000 years and will most likely erupt again. Blank volcanoes are active but haven't erupted in a long time. Blank volcanoes have not erupted for 10,000 years. The blank is the most active volcanic regions on Earth. Undersea volcanoes can become a chain of islands, true or false and hot spots underwater move often, true or false. All right, here is your skills lesson. So we're gonna review those quotation marks again. Remember, we use quotation marks when there is dialogue in a text. So when someone is speaking. So this could be at the beginning. So quotation marks can be tricky, that's what he's saying. Comma, end of the quotation, remarked Ben. Um, ben commented, comma, quotation marks can be tricky. So again, the speaking words are going in quotes, and there's a comma after the tag. Ben commented this. And the last version has quotation marks before and after. So it says, quotation marks can be tricky, comma, Ben stated, comma, but I think I have them figured out now. So you are going to rewrite these sentences and you're going to put in um, any commas and quotation marks that belong there. And here is another example for you. So use that, copy the sentences, plug in the commas and the quotation marks. Okay, so here is your spelling words and definitions here. You can use that to answer the rest of the questions. You're going to fill in the blank. It's bad to spend blank hours watching the television so my parents limit how much time I can watch. Old Faithful is a geyser in Yellowstone National Park that blink several times a day. My brother left the room in a blink way instead of continuing the conversation. 789, you're going to write me a sentence using the words disrupt, abrupt, and eruption. And again, your definitions are up here, so use that to help you. 
Uh, and number 10, you're going to choose one of these activities to practice your spelling words. So your words are here. You can choose to spell the words out loud. So you can say hierarchy, H-I-E-R-A-R-C-H-Y. So spell the words out loud to yourself or to a family member. You can write sentences using the words. So you can type those. You can write them on paper. You can copy the words onto paper. You can also type them into a Google Doc if you'd like. Or you can write the words in alphabetical order. So choose which activity you want to do for today's spelling. And that is all for today. Have a great day. I will see you next time. Bye, fourth grade.